The topic of this video is queues. A queue consists of incoming calls that need to be answered in an organized manner. Queues allow you to create rules to help you manage the flow of incoming calls and avoid abandoned calls, repeat attempts, and general customer dissatisfaction. Call queues are especially useful for scenarios in which the volume of callers is expected to exceed the number of people or agents that are available to answer calls. Technical support and sales numbers are good examples. From the complete PBX Launchpad, choose the Administration icon. From the Applications menu, choose the Queues option. There are very few mandatory parameters required for setting up a queue. The first is the number, which is just a way to identify it. Since a queue can be used as a destination for handling calls, the number identifier allows you to treat the queue as a kind of extension. The standard complete PBX distribution uses a four-digit numbering convention starting with the digit 8. We'll set up a queue with the number 8005 since we can see from the list of previously defined queues on the right-hand side of the screen that 8005 is free. Next, we need to provide a logical name for the queue. We'll call it Bank Account since this queue will be relevant for incoming calls related to bank account queries. The only other mandatory field to be defined relates to the handling of calls coming into the queue that go unanswered since you don't want to leave callers hanging with an incessant ringtone. There are various relevant destinations from which to choose. You could choose to hang up the phone or send the call to an alternate queue or an IVR, also known as an auto attendant. We can set this one to fail over to the virtual voicemail that we set up previously. Don't forget to submit your changes and then click Apply Config. There are many parameters that can be configured to customize queue handling to meet your specific needs. For example, sensitive queues can be password protected to control which employees or agents can answer calls from the queue. Queues can have both static and dynamic agents. For example, there can be a permanent group of employees who are always members of the queue, such as technical support engineers for a support queue. If a developer has the skills to be able to handle calls in the queue, he may sign in as a dynamic agent. Call Confirm is a useful option if one of your static agents is operating from a cell phone. As such, he may not always be available to handle a particular call. If you check this box, then the agent will be able to accept or decline the incoming call. In the case of the latter, he will be considered as busy and the call will be passed to the next available agent. Information about incoming calls can be provided to the agent. For example, in the CID name prefix field, you can assign a prefix such as bank to differentiate the call type for an agent that accepts calls from multiple queues. The agent will then be prepared to supply the relevant greeting if desired. Setting the value in the wait time prefix field to yes will display a message on the agent's phone display specifying the amount of time the caller has been waiting in the queue. In the Static Agents field, you can determine which extensions will be included in the queue on a permanent basis. In the Dynamic Members field, you can place extensions which are permitted to log in and take calls from the queue. These extensions can be used as backups when call volume is high or after hours when agents are scarce. Notice that each extension listed is followed by a comma and another digit. This digit signifies the hierarchy of the answering pool. Any extension followed by a zero is automatically included in the first attempts to reach an agent in the queue. If all extensions with a zero in the hierarchy are occupied, the complete PBX system will send the call to an extension with a suffix of one and then two, etc. This method allows you to save your more valuable agents for high volume situations only. You can restrict the use of dynamic agents by choosing yes. In this event, only dynamic agents that have been predefined for the queue can log in and take calls. 
Conversely, choosing No will allow any agent with the password to access the queue. There are some restrictions on the agent which determine how the incoming calls are handled, in particular when there are settings like Follow Me, Voicemail, and Call Waiting. Consult the online help or the reference guide for more information about these restrictions. Multiple ring strategy options are available. For example, do you want to ring all the agents in parallel until one answers, or do you want to ring the agent who has taken the least amount of calls, or the one who has been the freest the longest, etc.? Again, check the online help or the reference guide for assistance with these variations. You can define whether you want to skip busy agents. The queue wait allows you to define priority, also known as a penalty, for the queue, which is useful when an agent is a member of more than one queue. The agent will receive calls from the highest weighted queue before being sent calls from queues with a lesser weight. You can determine that all the calls in this particular queue should be recorded. This option is very useful in call centers, both for training purposes and follow-up. In the Timing and Agent Options section, you can set the maximum wait time that a call will be in the queue before it is considered unanswered and consequently redirected to a different destination. The Agent Timeout field lets you define how much downtime you allow agents in the queue after completing a call before their extension becomes available to take another call. This wrap-up time is generally used by the agent to write up the call in the CRM or complete other housekeeping tasks. In the Agent Announcement field, you can specify which, if any, pre-recorded message will be played just prior to the caller coming on the line. This is useful if the agent handles calls from multiple queues as it enables the agent to understand what service the caller is seeking – support, sales, etc. Setting the Report Hold Time field to Yes will provide an indication to the agent about the amount of time the caller has been on hold, so the agent can handle the call differently if the caller has been waiting in the queue for a long time. In the Capacity Options section, you can determine the maximum number of callers that should be allowed in the queue at any one time. If the number of calls exceeds the number indicated here, the call will automatically be sent to the failover destination without waiting in this queue. In the Join Empty field, you indicate how to handle incoming calls that enter a queue in which there are no logged in agents. You may decide to allow calls to join an empty queue if you use that as a trigger to get agents to sign into the queue. In the Caller Position Announcements, you can determine with what frequency you should provide incoming callers with feedback of their position in the queue and their estimated hold time. There are two very important flags in the Events, Stats, and Advanced section. Both Event When Called and Member Status Event values must be set to Yes if you want to see real-time information about this queue in the switchboard. The value in the Service Level field is a target which the organization is trying to meet. It is useful when reviewing the call center statistics reports. The final parameter is the mandatory failover destination. This determines where the call will be directed when it cannot be handled by the queue. Don't forget to submit changes and then apply config. This topic is covered in detail in the Complete PBX Reference Guide, which is available for download in PDF format from our website.